In this video, you're gonna learn how to make HTTP requests from your Node.js application, which I'm very excited to get to. Why is this so important? Because this is how your application is gonna be able to communicate with the outside world. So if you wanna get real-time weather data into your app, you're gonna have to make an HTTP request. If you wanna send an email to someone from your application, that's gonna be another HTTP request. And if you wanted to send someone a text message using something like the Twilio API, that would also be an HTTP request. It is at the core of building real world applications that actually communicate with the outside world. Now with those three examples, the weather data, email sending and text message sending, it's gonna be our node application making HTTP requests to another company's servers to get some task done. That means somewhere in our code, we're gonna specify the URL we wanna make a request to. This is provided via the API's documentation. We're going to fire that request off, sending some data possibly and getting a response back. So to get weather information, I would send the location I want the weather information for. I would then get back the weather information and I could use it in whatever way I wanted to. Now let's go ahead and explore the weather API we're gonna use in this video. If we head over to the browser, we can find this over at darksky.net. This is Andrew from the future with a very important update. If you head over to darksky.net, you'll see this banner right up top. Right here, it says that Dark Sky has joined Apple, and that is indeed true. They go into more details about the acquisition right here. Now, one of the many downsides of this acquisition is that the Dark Sky API is getting shut down. So they're shutting down the API, they're shutting down the Android app, and they're even shutting down the web app. So by the time you visit darksky.net, it's possible that this right here doesn't even show up. You might even get redirected over to apple.com, the app store, or somewhere else. So there was no notice given for this. So one day I woke up, the acquisition went through, and all of a sudden the class was broken. So I'm coming back to update the class. We'll be switching from the Dark Sky API to a real-time weather API provided by a service called WeatherStack. Now, the good news here is that these two APIs are pretty similar. So we'll still be able to build our real-time weather application with Node. We'll just source our weather data from a different API. Now this will require a few small changes. So throughout the next several lessons, I'll be coming back in with interruptions like this one when we need to change something to work with the new API. Now in the original lesson, what we did from here is we signed up for the Dark Sky API. That is no longer possible, so instead, let's go ahead and sign up for the WeatherStack API. We can find that by opening up a brand new tab, and right here, I'll head over to weatherstack.com. Now, like Dark Sky, we can sign up for WeatherStack for free, and there's no credit card required. They also have a generous free tier, allowing us to make a thousand requests a month. So right here, let's take a moment to sign up for the API, then we'll figure out how we can get that real-time weather data. Let's continue on by clicking sign up for free to create an account. That will redirect us over to their pricing page, and as mentioned, we'll be using their free tier where no credit card is required. This comes with a thousand API calls a month, which is more than enough for what we're building, and we get access to their real-time weather data, which is exactly what we're looking for. So right here, let's click sign up under the free tier option. Then we'll just provide some basic account details, starting off with our email and a password to log in. Down below, the only other information we need to provide is our address right here. So I'll take a quick moment to provide this information. And once we have that in place, we'll be able to use the API to fetch that real-time weather data. So down below, I am all done with that. If we keep scrolling down, we are at the end of the form. We have company details which are not required, so I'll leave those off. Then all we need to do is confirm that we are not a robot and we have to agree to their terms and conditions. Now you could choose to opt out of this right here, but when you're signing up for an API that you're using in an application, I would recommend always receiving the notifications they send. If the API changes, you want to get notified ahead of time so you can change your application before things break. 
If the API goes down, you want to get notified so you can pass that information along to your users who are seeing a broken application. So it's always best to get notified about the APIs you're working with. Right here, we should be able to sign up. It's going through the process, and when the sign up process is complete, we are brought over to this quick start guide. This gives us all of the information we need to fetch real-time weather data. So let's explore what we have right here. The first thing we have right here is your API access key. So your API key is a randomly generated string, and your API key will look different from mine. This is kind of like a password. You'll end up using your API key to authenticate when making requests to WeatherStack. So when you're working with WeatherStack, you have to have an account in order to fetch data, and this API key is how WeatherStack links the request you've made with your account. That's going to allow it to keep track of how many requests you've made. So the API access key is something we'll use in just a minute when we start to fetch real-time weather data, and you should treat this like you would any other password so it's not something you'd want to share in a public setting. Next up down below, they list out the various API endpoints that are supported. Now these endpoints are just different URLs that allow us to access the various services that WeatherStack provides. So right here, we have things like their current weather data, their historical weather data, and others. Now, as mentioned, the only data we get access to on the free plan is the current weather data, and that's fine since that's all we need. So down below, they also have the base URL. It is http colon forward slash forward slash api.weatherstack.com. So what I'd like to do from here is make our first request for real-time weather data. We'll end up combining this base URL down below with other information, including our API access key up above. So let's take our key. I'll copy that to the clipboard. Then we'll head over to a brand new tab and we'll make our first API request for real-time weather data. So right over here, for the moment, we'll make this request from a browser tab. Once we understand how it works and we can see the data we have access to, we'll end up making the same request from our Node.js application so we can use the weather data in our weather app. For now, let's just explore the basic structure. So as mentioned, we start off with HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, that is API dot weather stack dot com. Then to access the current weather data, it is forward slash current. Now, this is a good start, but we're still missing some important information. We have to provide our API key as well as the location that we're trying to fetch the weather for. To get that done, what we'll do is set up a query string. Right here, we can set up our query string by adding a question mark. Then we can set up as many key value pairs as we need to, to add things like our API key and our location. So the format for the query string is key equals value. If we needed to set up a second key value pair, I could do so by using an ampersand followed by my second key value pair. Right here, as an example, I could set name equal to Andrew. So this is the general structure we'll be using. We'll end up setting up key value pairs for our API key and the location we're trying to fetch the weather for. So right here, let's remove everything after the question mark. And the first query parameter that we have to provide is access underscore key. This is where we provide our API key. So I'll set access key equal to the API key that we just copied to the clipboard. Right here, I'll paste that in. After the API key, I'll set up an ampersand, allowing me to define a second key value pair. The second one is for the location. So right here, I'll set query equal to and what we'll do is provide a latitude and longitude set of coordinates for the location we're trying to search for. Now, later on, we'll figure out how to search for something by its name, like Philadelphia. Then we'll get the latitude and longitude so we can use it right here. But for the moment, let's just provide the coordinates for Alcatraz in San Francisco. So right here, that would be 37.8267. Then we'll add a comma followed by the longitude. That would be minus 122.4233. So we've set up our base URL. That is all of this stuff over here. From there, 
we set up our access key, making sure that Weatherstack knows who we are. Then we've set up our query, allowing us to fetch the weather for that specific location. Now, once again, this is a request we'll end up making from our code later on. For now though, let's hit enter and see what happens. Right here, the request was made and what we're seeing is our weather data for that location. Now in Firefox, when you pull up a URL and the response is JSON, it uses this tool to make that response a bit easier to work with. What I'd like to do though, is head over to the raw data tab. So if we switch over to raw data, this right here is the raw response. This is some JSON, exactly like the JSON we worked with in our notes application. So if we had access to this in our code, we know that we could take it, we could parse it, and we could start to access those properties. Now let's head back over to the JSON tab. So right here, we have our nice parsed weather data. So that is it for the differences for the moment. Now that we have this URL in place, we're going to jump back into the regular lesson. Now in the regular lesson, we'll end up making this HTTP request from our node application. That's going to allow us to access the weather data in our app. Now there will be a couple of other changes throughout the lesson. So I'll jump back in with a couple of other interruptions as those come up. For now though, let's jump back in to the regular lesson. Let's go ahead and move into Visual Studio Code and actually make the same request we're making here, but from our application. To start, I'm going to delete everything in app.js. We have our little set timeout example and that helped us illustrate how asynchronous programming works, but now it's time to move on to some more real world stuff. Now to make HTTP requests, there are a few different things we can do. We can use the core node modules, which we will cover a little bit later, but those are very low level. So it requires you to write a lot of unnecessary code to get everything working together. There are a bunch of NPM modules that are essentially wrappers around that core module, making it much easier and more streamlined to make HTTP requests. And that's what we're gonna use throughout the course. Although as mentioned, we will explore how to do it the bare bones way shortly. For now, we're gonna use a single NPM module to make our HTTP requests. And appropriately enough, it is called request. You can find it by Googling NPM request that is going to hopefully bring you to the package page right here. It is npmjs.com forward slash package forward slash request. We can visit that page to learn a bit more about what it's going to do for us. And this, like the other packages we've used is super popular with about 6 million weekly downloads. This is Andrew with a quick update. If you pull up the NPM package page for request, you'll see this message right up top that says this package has been deprecated and that's true. The request package has indeed been deprecated, which just means that the original maintainers no longer plan to release new versions or continue working on the project. The existing versions work just fine though, and you can still use request as you move through the class. You'll still be able to make those HTTP requests without any problem. So request is deprecated, but it's not going anywhere. Down below, we can see that almost 50,000 other NPM packages depend on request. And the weekly downloads are at an all time high with 20 million weekly downloads. So as you go through the class, you'll be able to continue using request exactly like I do in the videos. Now, if you're looking for an alternative package that's not deprecated, the good news is that the Postman organization, they have forked the request module and they're continuing to support it, releasing new versions. You can find that by just changing the URL a little bit. So right here, just before request and right after the forward slash, I'll add Postman hyphen. So now we're pulling up the package page for a package called Postman hyphen request. If I go ahead and visit that page right here, you can see this is the NPM package page for the alternative version. So the Postman organization is great. We'll actually use the tool Postman later in the class to test our own APIs as we start to create them. For the moment though, we won't talk about Postman, but Postman request is a nice alternative to the request module. It has the same API, so you can install the latest version of this and use this exactly like I use request in the class. All right, 
That's it for this quick interruption. Let's jump back into the regular video. Remember, you are more than welcome to just use request, or you could go ahead and use postman request. Now, if we scroll down, we can see all sorts of different examples as to how this can be used. We're going to explore more advanced features like promises and async await a little later. For now, we're going to get started with a nice, simple example. Let's go ahead and actually install this into our project so we can make a request from our node application. Over inside of the terminal, we first need to initialize weather app as an NPM project. If you remember, we got that done by running npm init from the root of the project, so in this case from the weather app folder. Now when we ran that command, we got brought to a questionnaire asking us to fill out a ton of values, and if you remember, we used the default value for all of them, so what I'm going to do is actually use control C to shut that down, so I've done nothing. Then I'm going to use npm init again with the Y flag. This just says answer yes to every single question using the default value, so we don't have to go through that little questionnaire. When we do this, it automatically generates the package.json file with all of the default values in place. We can now customize them to fit our needs, and now we can run npm install commands to install the modules we need. From the terminal, let's go ahead and do just that. I'm going to use npm i, which is short for install, to install the request module at the latest version 2.88.0. Now I'm not using the g global flag since this is a module I want to require and use inside of my scripts. So let's go ahead and get that done. I'm going to run the command that is going to install the request module, then we're going to move over to app.js to load it in and use it. So inside of app.js, let's go ahead and start by requiring request. I'm going to make a constant called request, and I am going to require the module we just installed, which was indeed request, and this is actually going to work because we installed the module. We have package.json, we have package lock.json, and in the node modules directory, we have all of the necessary modules to get request to work. So we have request itself, as well as all of its dependencies showing up inside of there. Now that we have this in place, let's go ahead and use it. We need to work with that same URL we just explored in the browser where we got the JSON data back. Over in the browser, I'm going to visit that tab where we were getting the JSON response and I'm going to grab the URL. This is the URL that contains our secret key, as well as that random set of coordinates which we will learn how to change later. So instead of visiting the URL in the browser and seeing the data here, we're going to visit it via the request module and we'll get that data back as a variable we can access in our code. So right here, let's start by storing the URL. I'm going to create a const URL whose value will be a string and I am going to paste the entire contents of that URL right here. This is Andrew with another quick update. Make sure you use the weather stack URL that we just explored earlier. So take the entire URL, copy that to the clipboard, and use that as the value for the URL variable. You won't be using the dark sky URL like I do in the lesson. Instead, you'll be using your weather stack URL. We're not going to change anything for the moment. We're just going to make the request so we get this exact same data back, but in our node app. Now from here, we can actually use request, which is a function to make the request. We are going to call it, providing to it two arguments. The first is an options object, which outlines what we'd like to do. That's where we provide the URL and other information. The second argument is a function to run once we actually have that response. So once the data is available for you to use in your application. Let's start with that first argument. That is the options object right here. We're going to set that up. And as mentioned, there is a single required property, which is URL. We have to provide the URL value we want to use. And I have that in a variable with the same name. That's all for the first argument. The second argument after that object is going to be a function. This is the function to run when we're actually getting the response back. So right here, I'm going to set up that callback function. 
and this function will run when either one, we have the weather data, or two, something went wrong and we weren't able to get the weather data. So maybe as an example, your machine doesn't have a network connection, maybe you're not connected to the internet. In that case, this request would indeed fail. Now this function gets called with two arguments. It gets called with an error, if there was one, otherwise this argument will be undefined, and it gets called with the response where we can actually access the response. This includes all sorts of information and it does include the JSON response we need. Now, if you're not familiar with the ins and outs of HTTP requests, that's okay. We're actually going to dissect them in detail in just a couple of videos. For now, let's go ahead and try to use the response in our program. To get started, let's go ahead and just dump the response object to the console. So console.log response, this is going to contain everything about the response, way more information than just that JSON data. I'm gonna run the program from the terminal down below. I will use clear to clear the terminal output, then node app.js to run our script. Now what's gonna happen is a ton of information is gonna get dumped to the terminal. We can see there are hundreds of lines of information. Response has a lot of properties we can use and those properties have other properties and so on and so on. Now, if we start to scroll up, we can see we have one really long string shown in green. This is actually the string JSON data that we wanna parse and access. If we scroll up to the top of that string, this is on the body property. Now there are plenty of other properties for getting the response headers or the status code or the URL or any other information you would want about the request. We'll explore those a bit later when we dissect HTTP requests. For now, let's just focus on that one property, the body property, which contains our data represented as a JSON string. Now we already worked with JSON, so we know how to parse a JSON string. Right here, I'm going to create a const called data, and I'm going to set it equal to, we'll be using json.parse to parse our data, and the data lives on response.body. Now, we're gonna go ahead and actually work with that data. I'm going to log the data object to the screen. Right here, we have app.js in its modified state. Let's go ahead and rerun the program. I can just use the backspace key to bring me back to the terminal down below, and from here, we're going to rerun the script with our parsing code in place. So I'm gonna run node app.js. This time, we're still gonna see a lot of stuff print, but a lot less. Now, if we scroll up, we're gonna see an endless amount of information. For example, we have all of these objects. I see properties related to wind speed and wind gusts. I have temperature min and max for the day, all sorts of useful forecast information. And we'll explore more of this in the next video. For now, to wrap up, I just want to access a single property. That is the currently property. So data dot currently. This is Andrew with one last update for the lesson. With the Dark Sky API, it was data dot currently. With the WeatherStack API as shown below, it is data dot current. So make sure to use that property. In a couple of moments, I'll talk about properties on the old response that don't exist on WeatherStack, but don't worry, we'll start to talk about the differences in data in the next lesson. This contains current forecast information, and if we rerun the program, this time we're gonna see a lot less output. We have what, maybe 20 lines, we have a summary, so wherever this location is, it is indeed clear, and I have information about things like the temperature. It is currently 54.28 degrees. I have things about the humidity, pressure, wind speed, all current weather information for that location. So now that we have this in place, we have indeed accessed our first HTTP API from Node.js, allowing us to pull in outside information into our applications. I'm excited to continue exploring HTTP requests, asynchronous Node, and the Weather API in the next video, so let's go ahead and jump right in.